watching the Aussie Boom Guru. Um, today I've got a quick tutorial for you. It's just one about a new package that's been released for Dynamo for Revit recently. Um, as you can see, we're going to have a bit of fun with this one. So it's a shortest distance analysis script um, that uses both Revit and Dynamo to find the shortest distance between two points. Um, so the goal is to find the shortest route uh, that's possible, uh, given a range of instructions and barriers that might occur along the way. Um, this is all done using the Space Analysis Package, which has been released quite recently um, for Dynamo and works in the latest version, which is 2.0.2. As you can see, it deals with uh, space lattices, um, so grids of points, and then shortest routes across those points. Um, so we're going to use it for a fun application here. Obviously, this is a video game a lot of you probably recognize. Um, just thought I'd make it a bit more visual so we can follow along more easily. It's done in Revit as well, so there's a lot of graphics I've used to achieve this. Um, so feel free to ask how I've done this if you're interested. So there's an architectural application that this tool can be quite helpful for, um, which is shortest distance analysis in regards to fire egress and escape. Um, for those that work in architecture, you'll be quite aware with the uh, 20 meter and 40 meter requirements in most uh, class 9 and uh, class 5 buildings, etc. Uh, and also some more stringent requirements in healthcare facilities as well. Um, but typically the rule of thumb is 20 metres to point of choice and uh, 20 metres to those exits from that point. Um, there's other applications for shortest distance analysis. Uh, some would be urban and master planning, um, looking at distances between elements of a master plan. Uh, optimising pedestrian and vehicle flow, so finding the most optimal routes uh, and if any are possible within a certain range. Um, equipment movement paths in facilities, clearance checking to make sure things actually can fit between a pathway, um, and also checking things such as fire extinguisher ranges. So lots of uh, potential this package gives us. But without further ado, I'll actually go to the package itself. Um, I've, I've written a script already that sort of will show you how this, this script can be used. Um, it's using this version of Dynamo here if you want to follow along at home. And it's using a package that can be found in the package manager under search for a package called space analysis. And I think currently there's a few versions that have been ongoing since the 14th of March, um, but I think there's minor updates to date. So I've got a model here in Revit that I've set up um, with just a, a maze that I need to get through between a start and a few endpoints. Um, so the script that I've written, I'll just run you through step by step how it works, but ultimately we're aiming to get to these two nodes, which come from the space analysis package. Um, the first being space lattice by bounding boxes and lines. So basically that will expect a bounding box for the conditions it has to work within. Barriers, uh, which are basically lines that obstruct uh, its pathway. And the resolution is just how, how much you want to think about what it's going to do. So you can tell it to be quite careful in how much it calculates. Because it's going to basically cross matrix a lot of options to find the, the optimal one. Um, and then route by space lattice. So this is where you actually say where you start, where you finish, and where you end up. So the route's quite simple. So I've got basically a start and an end point. Um, so that, that's relatively straightforward uh, for the most part. I'm just going to refresh the script a little bit slow. Try that again. OK, there we go. That's better. So in principle, we're going to pick a start point. So I'm going to pick this guy here. And the end point, let's um, pick this this element here. Um, I think most of you know what they are, but I'm just refraining from saying their name, just in case copyright comes into play. Um, okay, so I'm just going to select all my elements that I want. This is the start. This is how we find our barriers. I'm going to select everything. This includes walls, generic models, a, a railing in this case as well. But what I do from there in my script is actually get, get the category of all elements, find the ones that are walls, and filter them out just to get the walls that I need. Um, the script I've, I've used, um, you can go straight to the space lattice just by doing a um, element path of the wall. Um, but the problem is this builds a thin line that doesn't actually represent the thickness of the wall. So you'll technically be going through your walls to get to your destination, which isn't very accurate when you're looking at such things as fire egress, which are quite sensitive on distance. So what I do from there is I turn all my elements into geometry. So if I just preview this. I need to run the script once actually. I'll just run it once and show you what happens. And I'll just check my tolerance on walls. I'll just keep it at five for now. So I'll do a I'll do a tolerance of 500. I'll get to what this is in a second. So if I run this, it's going to take my start point and my end point and give me an optimal route. So you can see that's quite powerful um, in, in regards to what Revit can do out of the box. 
So I'll just zoom in there. So if I start previewing certain aspects, you'll see that I've got my element geometry, which is my walls. I'm flattening it into one list, and I'm doing what's called a union. So a solid by union, and that brings them all into one single shape that I can work with. So you can see element geometry, I have 32 walls. I flatten them into a list of walls, and then I flatten them into one solid. And from there, I'm actually getting the poly surfaces, so the faces of all those elements you'll see there. So it's basically a, a hollow shell now. And what I want to do there is thicken the surface of those elements. So that's where this tolerance comes into play. So I'm basically going either side of the wall out an extra, say, 300 to 500 usually is what I use. Um, that's to make sure that when you go around corners, you're not clipping the inside of a wall, basically. It's more realistic. Um, and if you set tolerance to 500 either side, you will actually find that the path checker won't go down corridors that aren't wide enough um, for, say, a one meter clearance which is what you need for a fire egress typically. Um, what I'm going to do then is thicken them, union them, so bring them, bring the surfaces back into the solid. So I more or less end up at a thicker solid now that you'll see there, which represents the actual bounds that the script has to work within. Um, I'm going to get the XY plane and get an intersect of that. So that will pretty much give me a flat set of elements, basically the cut on the ground plane of those elements. I'm going to get the perimeter curves of that, which gives me the closed lines. I'm going to flatten them because I found the perimeter curves can't be fed into this script typically. But what I do is I take the start and the end point of each of those curves and I build a new line from each one. And I end up with a set of lines in principle. So, just bring that back. So you'll see that I end up with a set of lines here. And this is something that the script can accept. So this one's much easier to work with. I think beyond that, the only other thing is to get a bounding box. So I get my bounding box all the way back here from my solid by union. So that's basically just the extents the script is going to have to work with when it creates a space lattice. So if I get to the space lattice, you've seen I've fed in my bounding box, my barriers are my lines of my walls. Um, the reason why I convert these as well is because this will actually cut things like doors out as well. So I'll show you a test later where I add doors to the equation. Um, from there, resolution. Um, is basically how accurate you want to be. I found 100 is usually sufficient for most purposes. Um, the route is where you feed the space lattice in. I get the locations of the start point and the end point. And from there, it creates a route by curve, which is basically this element that it's calculated. Um, and I'm going to get the length of it as well. So that if I run this script, I actually get an output that tells me how long that path is as well, because usually that's quite important when you're doing a check like that. If I do a preview on here, this is basically just a watch node where I can see roughly the bounds that I'm actually working in with the script. So you can see where it's tried to get around corners and where it's approximated here and there. And that all comes down to the, um, the tolerance factor here with the accuracy of testing. So how many points it interpolates in this case. But typically it will keep away from corners if you work with about 100 to 150. I've got a 3D preview as well, just in case someone's in the script and wants to view the actual outcome in a small snapshot, which could be quite handy. But I'll just turn off the preview for that. Um, it's good to turn off preview where you don't need it because it speeds up the script a lot as well. It tries to, to calculate less um, when it's showing you what's happening. So I'm going to take that out as an output. Um, I'm taking this route into a curve from polycurves. So you can see here it generates a polycurve at that point. So this is actually a line technically. So I can hide that if I don't want to see it. Um, so at the moment, I'm really seeing nothing except for the result. Because I take that poly curve and I feed that into a railing uh, with set path. So you need an existing railing in your model and you just select that railing. Um, creating railings, I found, is, is difficult, um, if not impossible, without API scripting. But this railing set path node, I believe, is coming from... I'll just find which package it is railing set path. So it's from Genius Loci, uh, which is a very handy sort of general general package. Um, so that one will basically adjust its path to this. Um, in terms of how I've built some of these elements, just so you can see here, this is basically a railing made up of a lot of segments. So it can be quite intense if you're not careful. Um, if I turn on my property browser, sorry, my property browser, You'll see in the type properties for the railing that it's basically a set of there's a rail which I'm hiding as an as a subcategory of railing, um, and I'm basically placing a baluster every 200 millimeters with a never break pattern, spread pattern to fit. 
to achieve that graphic. Um, and that's pretty much the railing you can see there. So if I go and I pick another another actor, for example, so I'll say that my endpoint is now now something different instead. Let's actually refresh this. So I'll pick, say, let's go all the way in the far corner. So quite a hard one for it to figure out. Even even harder, probably this one here. So it has to take the most corners and bends to reach this point. So if I rerun the script again, you'll see it's quite quick. Um, I can't run the script in a perspective view, but I can run it in a standard view, such as an axonometric. So there you go. You can see it's recalculated the route, um, which is quite quite efficient. Um, I can also go and increase my tolerance off walls or decrease tolerance, but that's basically how it's going around the walls because it's actually keeping away from that increased volume of wall there. So that's pretty cool. I've also got some doors as well that I can bring in just to show you that this package does manage to navigate past doors if you model it specifically to do so. So I've got a whole bunch of doors here. I'm just gonna just gonna move these in. I think I'll move them by 25 meters. So I'll bring them in. And I'll just toggle my design options so you can see them. So this is where the doors are occurring. And it will still handle these doors as well as part of the equation if I run this. And it still managed to find that route. And the, the really critical thing about why I've thickened the walls is because now they can get through the doors because they understand that the door cut is a part of the wall's geometry. If you use the wall's location, it gives you a solid line that goes past doors, windows, openings, etc. So that's a really important part of the step. Um, and otherwise, that's that's really it. So um, hopefully you have a lot of fun with this package. Um, if you have any questions or comments about how it works, um, feel free to put them down below. And uh, feel free to subscribe and follow if you like what you're seeing. And um, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.